Hello. Make. Hello. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a drum machine. It's not going to be an ordinary drum machine, because that would be fucking wouldn't it? Instead, we're going to borrow some of the technology from the amazing Fantasy Mansion, and we're going to be making a drum machine that kind of generates generative drum sounds. It needs to be able to make noises, and I think it's probably a good idea if it's like, if you send MIDI notes to it, then it will make generative drum noises and send the drum noises out of the sound holes and maybe what if it could also make its own generative drum beats basically and play them using its generative drum sounds maybe that would be a what if what if we make it so that it can send midi out as well and then it can make generative drum beats and it can send those out of its midi holes and it can control other drum machines. I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be incredibly difficult. But uh, let's try and pull it off. I think, I think I'm gonna use one of these. I think I'm gonna use this. Arduino Pro Micro. If you, can, if you can hear some annoying noises in the background, that's because uh, in the other end of the room I've got a 3D printer that's printing face masks for uh, health workers who ever needs it. I've only got one 3D printer, it's not going very fast, but at least every little bit counts in it. So let's start by uh, taking this chip, get things up and running, make this happen. I guess, to start off, we have this chip, Pro Micro. It's not really a chip, it's a circuit board with a chip on it and some other stuff. Uh, I like to use pad per hole proto boards. I'll show you why in a minute. And uh, we've got these female pin headers. There, get them through there. No, let's put it over here, like that. Soldering iron, solder. To deal with the MIDI input, we're going to need an opto isolator. What does an opto isolator do, you're wondering? Well, basically, in here, there's a little light that blinks, and there's also a phototransistor that sees the light blinking. So you can send electricity in one to blink the light, and then you can measure the light blinking on the other side, and that way you can have two electronic circuits talking to each other without actually sending electricity to each other. So they're, they've got a galvanic barrier, I think it's called. They're just blinking at each other. That's that's why it's white and not, not black like most other chips are. So that when the light blinks inside there, then it, it's brighter on the white walls of the inside, basically. It's a good idea to have a little socket. Socket. Let's put that there. Sure, that'll be fine. Um, power LED is a good idea. I guess we can just solder up the uh, MIDI in circuitry then. This is why I like pad per hole boards. If you don't want to do a lot of planning before you start making your circuit, you can just basically stick the uh, components through on the top and then bend the legs to where you want them to go on the underside and make your circuit like that. Okay. 
to send the noises out of our circuit, we're going to be uh, using in the code, we're going to be using something called port manipulation. And what that means is that we can send a number to a port. I think we'll be using port B. And uh, that will then be translated to a binary number. And the zeros and ones, the bits, will be sent out to each their pin on that port, which is handy, actually, because that means uh, that we can also make a DAC digital to analog converter. And because we've got the bits on each of their pins, we can make something that's called an R2R DAC. I can hear you. I can hear you asking it through the through the lens over there. What's an R2R DAC? The R2R DAC it is basically just a resistor coming out of each one of these bits, each one of the pins that is a bit, and then another resistor going between them, basically. And then for every two R's on the resistor coming out of the leg, is R for the resistor going between the legs. It'll make sense if you look at the picture and just concentrate a little bit. Uh, and that means that the binary digital numbers coming out of the pins they get translated to analog voltages that correspond to those numbers. It's magic. It's not, it's not really magic. It's actually quite simple maths, but it's handy, I guess we can say. And there we go. I've made a 4-bit deck. Uh, it got a bit messy because the pins aren't in order here and I also had to put some of the resistors on the underside. Well, I suppose I had to, but uh, that's what I did. Soldered on a jack connector and we can just uh, we can start seeing how this works. I've been writing code. Here's some numbers. These are the variables for all the different cool noises. So these will have to be changing with knobs afterwards. So here in the setup, all we're doing is deciding that the pins are output pins and setting up the MIDI. And I don't know why this is there. That doesn't need to be there. Let's take that away. Some debugging rubbish. And then this is the code that it runs again and again and again. Uh, we can see that it starts by checking if there's any MIDI coming in. And if there is MIDI coming in, then it checks if it's a note on message. And then it sets these variables. These are going to be set with knobs here. So that's what this code is here that I've not put in yet. Then what it does is it checks what MIDI MIDI note on it is. If it's 60, which is middle C, then it does this code here. 500,000 times it runs this function, uh, which you can think of as like plotting a function on your calculator, but instead of it being drawn on your calculator, it gets pushed out of the speakers as sound. Basically it does that 500,000 times or until it gets a note off or if it gets a different note on. This is one of the sounds and then there's another sound here and it just is repeated for all the 12 different sounds down here. For each different MIDI note it gets it will run a different one of these algorithms, these uh, functions. This isn't a very tidy or clean or sensible way to do the code. This is just kind of a uh, proof of concept just to see if it actually works. Can only play one sound at a time now. I want to change that so it can play several sounds at the same time. But right now it'll stop playing one sound if it's going to start playing the next sound. So let's just let's just see if this works, shall we? Because it might not work. You never know. Let's download this code to our little microcontroller and just see what happens, shall we? All right, let's see how this code works now. So uh, here's the microcontroller. It's got power through the USB hole and uh, it's got a jack here plugged into its sound hole. The other end is plugged into this speaker here and it's got a MIDI jack plugged into its MIDI hole right here, which is coming out of this keyboard. So hopefully I can push keys on this keyboard. It'll send MIDI to the microcontroller and it'll make its cool noises uh, going out of the sound tube. I'm really pleased that this works already. Of course, it doesn't have many of the features that I want in there. We're going to have to put some knobs on and we're going to have to put a sequencer in there and uh, build it in a box, put some blinky lights on, bling it out a bit more. But you can already kind of make drum beats with it if you use this sequencer here. <laughs> So let's take it back to the soldering table and stick some knobs on it and uh, see where we can take it from here.
Here's my knobs. A, B, C. Fourth knob, I'm going to be using them as voltage dividers. That means one end of all of these knobs wants to be connected to ground, and the other end wants to be connected to 5 volts, and the middle wants to be connected to analog inputs on my microcontroller. Yeah, yeah, she's unhappy. You might as well. What the hell? Why are you too damn short? So there, three push buttons, a shift button, three 10k potentiometers, let's just write some code for this. Uh, all I've really done is put these uh, analog reads in here to read the potentiometers and then a, an extra parameter here for, uh, for the time and that's just how fast it plays the sample now. And for anybody interested, the, all this code that I've written so far is available on my Patreon site for my lovely patrons. Alright, it's a bit more of a mess now, those wires and knobs, but it does more things, so I can change how it sounds. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, because it is utterly mind blowing, but we're not finished yet. In the next video, we're going to be putting it in a box. We're going to be making the buttons work. We're going to be making a sequencer and we're going to be using it to make some music. So don't miss that or you'll be really fucking depressed. So like I probably already mentioned the uh, schematic and the code are on the Patreon site. And if this is the kind of stuff you want to see, then smash the bell really hard so that it breaks. Come back and watch another video later with me.